Namaste. So we were in a conversation with a young man yesterday, and he thinks he knows Advaita philosophy. In fact, he's very proud of it, so proud that he thinks he can instruct me <laughs> about it. But he kept saying things like, you and I are one. It's all one, right? And then the, the kicker was he brought up that because I'm an Advaitin and I'm supposed to be, you know, a teacher or whatever, I have no right to complain about anything, right? So these are all manifestations of Neo-Advaita philosophy, the incorrect understanding and application of the non-dual. Why is it incorrect? Well, we have to go all the way back to Shankaracharya's introduction to his commentary on the Brahma Sutra. There, he talks about superimposition, adhyasa. Adhyasa is when one or more layers of incorrect impressions are superimposed on a substrate that is true. And the example that he gives, which is famous, is the rope and the snake. A guy goes out in the evening, maybe he's a little high, you know, or maybe he's just sleepy. He just woke up to pee or something. He goes out and he sees this thing curled up in the corner and he goes, oh my God, it's a snake. And he gets all fearful and runs away, right? And he tells his friends and they come back with a lamp or flashlight and they see, oh, it's just a rope curled up in the corner. This is superimposition. What's happening is that the person sees this form and associates it with past memories of snakes. Snakes can be dangerous. So he becomes fearful and runs away. What's happening is that he is superimposing the memory of the snake, which is not present, on the substrate of the rope, which is present. And because of that, he perceives, or rather misperceives, the presence of the snake in the here and now, leading to symptoms of fear and so forth. So in the same way, we misperceive the body as the self. This is another example of what I call wrong superimposition or the reflection of actual superimposition. Adhyasa abhasa. Abhasa means a reflection. It's not the real thing. Similarly, the consciousness that we ascribe to the body and the bodily organs, such as the eyes and ears and so on, the mind, <laughs> is another example of superimposing something that is not there, that's not present, on a substrate that is present, and ascribing qualities and functions to it that it just doesn't have. Okay, let me explain then why this is wrong. And to do that, we have to go to our good old diagram of the four states of consciousness. Now, why is it wrong to say you and I are one? You and I, the separate individuals, are perceived in Jagrat consciousness, the dualistic conscious of the material world, the phenomena observed through the senses. But the idea that we are one, or that everything is one, is a perception in Turiya consciousness, consciousness of Brahman. So if we remember being told somewhere that Brahman is one, 
and then we superimpose that on the actual situation that actually there are two. <laughs> this is an incorrect overlapping or incorrect reflection of superimposition. Adhyasabhasa. So this is a very common misunderstanding, and the Neo-Advaitans do it all the time. Huh? You and I are one, baby, so let's party, you know? This is not a, a correct understanding, and it leads to all kinds of disappointments, because in this material world, you and I are not one. Sorry, buddy. We're not one. We are individuals. So, in actual fact, the states of consciousness do not overlap. Or when they do, they can do so correctly or incorrectly. Now, there are instances in the Upanishads when this is used to bring someone closer to the realization of Brahman. For example, Brahman is meditated on as space, or as fire, or even as water, or air. But these are material elements. They're part of Jagrat. How is it then that meditating on these elements as Brahman brings us closer to Brahman? Well, because we can think of Brahman in that way. Whereas if we're simply aware of the world through our senses, we would never even guess that such a thing exists. It's a step towards Brahman. It's not actual Brahman realization. So that's the problem. People overlap the states of consciousness. Well, for instance, daydreaming. When you're dreaming, that's Svapna consciousness. But when you're doing it, while you're awake and supposed to be doing something. <laughs> it's like, don't just sit there staring off into space, you know, do something, right? Of course, the Zen people turn that around and say, don't just do something, sit there and stare off into space. <laughs> Why? Because again, that leads to the quiescent mind and to some realization, in this case, sushupti. Now, sushupti is a state where there are no sense objects, but we are still in dualistic consciousness, conditioned consciousness. Deep sleep. And this is a deep state of rest that is absolutely necessary for the mind and the brain to recover from the day's activities. In one sense, you can say all of the conditioned states of consciousness are superimpositions on Brahman. And they're all reflections of Brahman. So they are all actually adhyasabhas. That's why they're called ignorance. It is ignorant because it reveals a lack of discrimination. Aviveka. Viveka means discrimination. Aviveka is the opposite, the lack of discrimination. Due to a lack of discrimination, we superimpose the conditioned states of consciousness on Brahman. In the same way, we also think that one who has realized Brahman should be like always blissful. Well, that's a nice idea, but it's not right. Ramana Maharshi, huh? arguably the most realized sage, many other great masters, used to chastise and discipline their disciples when they were wrong. So does this mean that they are complaining and, and that's wrong? Because they're realized people, they're supposed to be always blissful? Yes, yes. No, because in this material world, in the world of you and I, as different entities, things go wrong. People misunderstand. People do stupid things. And a teacher 
A responsible teacher has to correct them. So we don't agree with this idea, which is kind of a folk belief in India, especially South India, that once a person is on the plane, a platform of non-dual consciousness, they have no right to complain about anything. No, we don't buy that. That is just a way to weasel out of an uncomfortable conversation. Huh? You go to your teacher and he says, no, you're wrong about something. And you say, but master, you are realized you have no need to complain. Oh, bullshit. It's bullshit. It's just a sneaky, cheating way to get out of an uncomfortable conversation to get out of any kind of discipline by a master. So, let's drop this nonsense. Huh? There is correct superimposition, as given in the Upanishads, when one is induced to approach Brahman by means of abhyasa. But then there is incorrect superimposition when we ascribe consciousness or any other quality of a higher state of consciousness to something in a lower state. Like, for example, ascribing consciousness to the body. Consciousness is not a symptom of the body, because only Brahman is consciousness. But if we superimpose wrongly, we identify the body with Brahman, and we think the body is the self. This is the nonsense that is at the root of all suffering. So it must be given up by anyone who actually wants to understand Advaita, or who actually has realized the four states of consciousness. That will clear one of the greatest obstacles from the path of full self-realization. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.